Hi everyone and a warm welcome to QuantPy. In this video we will dive deeper into the origin and development of the Basel IRB maturity adjustment formula for the corporate asset class. Sounds daunting, but we will see that it is far simpler than anything we have seen so far. We recap how this formula fits into the IRB capital requirements by reproducing the IRB formula. The IRB formula is used for calculating capital requirements for credit risk. We were introduced to the unexpected loss in the previous video. The unexpected loss is the amount by which the loss at the 99.9% .9 confidence level exceeds the expected loss. We were equally introduced to the formula R for the corporate asset class, which we reproduce here. We are all set and ready to go. So let's dive right into our main topic, which is the maturity adjustment. The UL formula is based on a standard one-year maturity. And the portfolios to which this formula is applied to in practice will have maturities longer or shorter than the standard maturity. So the UL amount is adjusted by the maturity adjustment factor. This maturity adjustment factor is also dependent on the probability of default given by a non-linear formula. This formula looks more complicated than it really is. By the way, capital letter M is the effective maturity. The best way to get that first feel for it is to plug one in M. The terms in the fraction cancel, and we are left with UL. And what it means is, for a portfolio with an effective maturity of one year, no adjustment is applied. Bam. Now, let's plug 2.5 in M, where 2.5 is the maturity that was used as a benchmark for the calibration of the IRB formula. It was initially proposed to be 3, but then changed to 2.5 following the consultation. So the numerator is 1, whereas the denominator remains unchanged. Thus, we conclude that the term in the denominator is simply there to reflect the fact that the formula was calibrated to a maturity of 2.5 years and then rescaled in terms of a one year maturity. Let's ignore the term in the denominator for now, then, because we already know how it comes about. And we can write the maturity adjustment as follows. One way of looking at it is the maturity adjustment is like a proportional adjustment. Essentially, the capital requirements change by a variable MA, where MA is simply maturity minus 2.5 times the scalar, where the scalar varies by the probability of default. For maturities shorter than 2.5, MA will be negative, meaning the capital requirements will be lower than the unexpected loss. Whereas for maturities higher than 2.5, the capital requirements will be higher than the unexpected loss. Which is to be expected because we know the base formula was calibrated based on a maturity of 2.5. And as we said just now, the adjustment in the denominator that we have dropped for now will then scale this 2.5 to one year. Now let's go through how the Basel Committee came up with this formula. As mentioned in the previous video, when Basel started developing the IRB approach, the banks and central banks, or supervisors, had already implemented portfolio loss models. These would be the equivalent of what is called economic capital these days. There are two alternative frameworks, one based on the mark-to-market -market type of approach, such as credit metrics and portfolio manager, and the other approach based on default mode such as credit risk plus. Basel initially tried both approaches, but the results were different. So the default mode approach was subsequently discarded, though it would have certainly influenced the proposal implicitly. So the Basel committee ran these mock to market models for different levels of probabilities of default across maturities and produced a matrix of unexpected losses. Basel then reformatted these figures, essentially standardising each row by the unexpected loss of a three-year maturity. Remember, the initial proposal was to calibrate the requirements based on a maturity of three years, 
but this was then subsequently amended to 2.5 years. By the way, each row seems to correspond roughly to the rating categories used by rating agencies such as Moody's and Standard & Poor's, so no big surprise here. Also note that the initial proposal was to cap the maturity adjustment at seven years, so as to avoid discouraging banks from lending long-term, as short-term lending would create too much uncertainty for businesses that borrow money to fuel growth in the economy and create employment. So that is the motivation for the columns. The seven years was then amended to five years. Here are the results. The results shared here are based on the quantile. Remember, Basel's initial proposal was to base capital requirements on quantile. But this received resistance, because banks were saying that they should not be holding capital for expected losses, which is already reflected in pricing and profitability through provisions. So afterwards, this was changed to unexpected loss. Essentially, banks would have to hold capital for losses in excess of expected loss. This change would have resulted in changes to these figures. So take these figures as indicative only. Now, if you look at each row, the slope appears constant. For example, increasing maturity from one year to three years, or three years to five years, increases the requirement by 0.6 which is 0.3 per year. We see the same slope in the second row. Now, for a probability of default of 1%, increasing the maturity from one year to three years, and from three years to five years, both maturity increases increase the requirement by the same rate, but the value of the slope is smaller at 0.15 per year. And for higher probability of default of 15%, Again, the slope from 1 to 3 years and from 3 to 5 years are the same, but the value of the slope is smaller, 0 0.1 per 2 years or 0 0.05 per year. So we observe that the slope declines with the probability of default, which is why we have b as a function of the probability of default in the Basel formula. By the way, the capital requirements will not necessarily increase linearly with maturity. But the committee was only interested in the maturity from the 1 to 5 years range. So because of this natural flaw and cap, a linear relationship over the restricted range is likely to be valid. Now, we reproduce the Basel plot of B as a function of the probability of default. It is a smooth version of the data we saw in the table. Now, the Basel Committee determined that the following nonlinear relationship provides a good approximation to the data. It looks very impressive, so let's spend a minute to take in what is going on there. Of course, we already know that the probabilities of default range from 0 to 1. We also know that the log of the probability of default takes negative values in this range. Let's plot and explore. So now, for small probabilities of default, the log of the probability of default is a large negative, which when multiplied by the negative coefficient becomes positive. So we get a relatively large value. If the probability of default is close to 1, then the log of the probability of default will be close to 0. So the second term inside the square will be close to 0 meaning you get square of 0 0.11852, which comes out to be about 0 0.014. By the way, if you ignore the square, then this equation inside is just a downward sloping linear relationship on the log scale. Squaring pushes the smaller values downwards. You might genuinely ask, why not fit an exponential relationship like we saw in the correlation video? The reason is that the exponential does not fit the data very well. But don't just take our word for it. Let's instead play with it and fit an exponential between the 0 0.3 value where the probability of default is 0 and the 0 0.05 value where the probability of default is 0 0.2. We plucked these values from an earlier tabular result. 
And let's see how this changes when we shift the K. The fit is not great, and hence why Basel went for a transformed second order polynomial instead of exponential. By the way, in an earlier version which used the quantile data instead of the unexpected loss data, Basel fitted the following relationship. Again, sounds complicated, but the numerator is just the downward sloping linear function lying so low that it is almost invisible. But the denominator is close to the square root function, so when we divide the numerator by that denominator, we get a shape that resembles the graph we saw before. Let's see them on the same plot. Now, let's reformat the formula to the Basel form. Substituting for ma, we get... For immaturity of one year, this formula would give... But we want the maturity adjustment relative to one year, so if we divide the above formula by this expression, we get the formula which now gives a multiple of 1 for one year maturity, lower than 1 for a maturity of less than one year, and higher than 1 for longer maturities. And we have the Basel maturity adjustment formula. Now, we kind of get why B takes this form. With m and 2.5 in the numerator, and 1.5 in the denominator. But at QuantPy we are huge fans of this topic, and would like to share this different approach. We showed earlier how the maturity adjustment was derived by using the capital requirement matrix of probability of default and maturity. Let's consider a generic row, which probability of default we represent by x, and index by p. As we mentioned before, Basel scaled each row by the capital requirements of a three-year maturity, which was the golden portfolio. So the data for some sample maturity has become. Needless to say that the ratio in the three-year column becomes one, and each other column is then in relation to the capital requirements of the three-year maturity. The golden portfolios were subsequently changed to 2.5. So, if we use 2.5 to represent this maturity, this becomes. The 25 should really be 2.5, but we saved some space by ignoring the decimal. Now, we know that b is the slope of this ratio with respect to the maturity, and we know the slope would be equal to the change in the value of the ratio divided by the change in the maturity. If we use 2.5 as the starting point, we can calculate the slope by using higher maturity or lower maturity. The numerical analysis guys call these forward and backward, but the choice doesn't matter because we saw that the slope is constant, or we can write it in terms of a generic maturity m. Now, the second ratio is 1, so we get... Shifting the term in the denominator to the other side and rearranging, we get... Now we shift 1 to the right-hand side. And then multiply through by the term in the denominator to get... Now let's see what we get for a maturity of one year. We just plug 1 in M. So this becomes... And now... We write the 2.5 year capital requirements in terms of the 1 year capital requirements, and we substitute this into the expression, and now we have the capital requirements of a generic maturity M in terms of 1 year capital requirements. Let's bring in that Basel version. So the UL gives the 1 year capital requirements. And the maturity adjustments then scales it to any given maturity m. So that's the Basel maturity adjustment formula demystified. We will stop short of calling them Basel toys, that will be way too cheeky. We hope you enjoyed the video and look forward to seeing you in the next.